cooking ping pong balls for breakfast. Mmm, yummy. What's up you guys, Jerk120 here. I'm gonna teach you how to make a vine. It's a magic video editing vine and I thought this would be a good first starter because it's relatively easy but there is some challenging stuff going on. I'll be using Adobe After Effects to teach you how to do this. So download Adobe After Effects for yourself and give it the trial and if video editing is what you wanna do, you can make a lot of money in it. And of course, if you create cool content using your video editing skills you can make money off of the content that you create instead of like for yourself long story short you can become self-sufficient if you learn how to edit videos so uh that's just one one job i was interested in it i thought uh you're here because you're interested in it and you want to learn what i do so uh i'm going to be heavily influenced and inspired from Zach King in these kind of kinds of tutorials. Zach King is a Viner, a Vine personality sponsored by McDonald's and a bunch of other car companies. He's a big time name. Uh, anyway, let's dive in. Here we are in Adobe Premiere, just so I can show you what we're going to be creating. This is Zach King's original post. Cooking ping pong balls for breakfast. Mmm, yummy. So I straight up verbatim just completely ripped the idea and here uh, I have files for you to download and this is me, of course, in my kitchen. Cooking ping pong balls for breakfast. That's, mm. a, Yummy. that's a raw shot. You saw it jump out, right? You saw, saw the ping pong ball go in and then go out. And here's the other shot of me dropping an egg into the pan, the hot pan. And that's what we're going to be working with. And we're going to combine the two shots to create what Cooking ping pong balls for breakfast. Mmm, yummy. Now, there's a bunch of different ways to do it. I'm just teaching you the way that I would do it. And so let's dive into Adobe After Effects. And in the description of this video is a download link to the video file that I'm using so you can follow along verbatim. So in Adobe After Effects, after Effects, I like to call it. In the project section, you can see project here, you're going to double click to import your file. There's a bunch of different ways you can do it. You can do file, import, file. You can go into your finder and you can drag and drop it into here. Or you can double click in the project area and it'll launch up and you can go to where it is saved in your download folder or wherever you saved it. So, here's the file that you have that you can download. And what you're going to do, first thing, is you're going to grab this yellow uh, shape right here. And you're going to go where the video splits. It's two clips in one. And uh, so when you get to the spot, it's at... I'm going frame by frame by using the page down button. Frame, page up and page down. So here's the split. You're gonna go to nine seconds and eight frames. Select the file by clicking it. And I'm on an Apple computer, so I'm going to hit Command Shift D. Now on a on if you're on a Windows, I think it's Control Shift D. So if you're on a Windows, anytime I say Command or Apple, uh, just think Control. Like Control D to, does duplicate and just, uh, yeah. So we split this file into two. Now there's uh, a couple of different ways. There's a thousand different ways to do the same thing. So here I hit Control Shift D to create two layers and split that. Now what I could have done is hit, uh, gone up to edit, duplicate, and then trimmed this to the beginning and trimmed this one to be the end clip. But uh, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of work to be done. Or I could have just simply command shift D. So boom, we split. So what we're going to do is we're going to go, we're going to select this and we're going to go to around the frame where the egg is just about to hit into the pan. Maybe here-ish. And uh, I'm going to hit alt, open bracket. And that will trim that key. Now again, you can simply just grab from here and hold shift and go to the end key. Uh, what shift will do is it will snap, like I'm here, snap. 
see? So anytime you do shift in this program, it can be used as a snap uh, button. So boom, here's our egg, right? Now we'll mask me out in a second, but what I want to do first is go to where the egg is about to go into the frying pan. So here it comes. If I go frame by frame, about here, that's where our egg kind of is. So if I grab this, this uh, the egg layer, we'll call it, and bring it over, holding shift again to the beginning, boom, there it is. So now what we need to do is combine these shots. Cool? And we have to make it basically disappear so we don't see the ping pong ball drop out of the pan. And the way to do that is we're here and we will select our ping pong file. We'll rename these layers. So click the bottom layer and hit the return button and you'll be able to rename it. We'll call this the ping pong and go to the top layer and hit return and we'll call this the egg. Boom. So now we know what's going on. Let's click our ping pong folder or file and go one frame to the right. Oh, you know what? Two frames. Two frames to the right and we still need me in the shot or uh, our subject you know go film this yourself you can be the subject we still need uh, our subject in the shot but we can't get that ping pong ball bou bouncing out of the frame so what we're going to do is mask out uh this shot here and so what we will do is we will hit uh g we can hit g or we can go over to this pen tool i'll hit g i am a fan of uh, shortcut keys and uh, better yet, before we go into that, let's split this ping pong folder again. Control Shift D. So we're only applying the mask to this layer. So G, and then let's go along uh, the cabinet. And what's nice about this is I locked it down on a tripod, so the shot should be the exact same, no matter where we really like make the mask. Um, but We'll keep it along the stove and stuff like that. Go back around to the beginning and hit this. See? So now it's only highlighting this. We got rid of everything else. We want just the opposite. So you can open this by clicking this little arrow button and then clicking the masks and then opening the mask again. Or you can simply select it and hit M. And that will bring up our mask stuff. So what you're going to do here is hit go from uh and by the way if you're seeing if you're not seeing what i'm seeing if you're seeing this it's because i turned off this layer with this little eyeball switch over here so turn that off so we can just pay attention to this ping pong really quick so hit uh instead of add we're going to change that to subtract so now we can't see the rest of the ping pong which is fine because we only want to see this part of the ping pong so what we can do is mask out basically just the frying pan because that's all we want. We don't even want this stream of egg coming down. So what we're going to do is select the egg clip and we're going to mask around just the pan area. Uh, go to the first frame. Okay, so that's where the egg is. Go to the very first frame. And with the mask tool, we're going to key out or uh, mask out just where the egg is, just the pan. Perfect, just like that. So boom, now there's some, there's some scrutiny going on. See, there's some color stuff. So that's why it's nice to uh, bring this more up and we'll bring this over here. And you can grab these points that you made and put them in more contrasting areas. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll bring this down here. So now it's more along this 
you can see the mask is going along this gray metal part and then around this black metal part and then along the top edge and then down from uh, our our coffee maker and to see what exactly is happening you can do command shift h that's going to hide the stuff or uh, another thing to do that is this button right here. You toggle the mask on and off with its visibility. So already with this hidden, I see a flaw right right here. Now it's probably going to leave because we're making a Vine video and it will be hidden, but all masks should be feathered to some degree, to uh, some extent. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit the egg which has our mask, our harsh mask here. You can see it coming along here. And we'll hit our egg, and we're going to hit F for feather. Now watch what happens to this if we boost uh, the feather of our mask up. And the way to boost this up is to just grab this, and you can shift it along left or right. You can do that, or you can click it and hit 20 or whatever frame you want to do. This keeps bouncing. So, let's put it, uh, here's our harsh edge. It would probably need it at, that looks good, 26. So, there we go. If we look, boom. But now, now we got some more problems. All of our stuff went, and we have this egg stream, right? We don't want that egg stream there. So, let's go in and uh, hit mask path. So we'll hit M again on the egg, and we'll just hit, we'll toggle this stopwatch here. And what that's going to do is allow us to animate our mask. So toggle the mask back on using this button or command shift H. And if you do, if you go down to when the egg hits, then you can simply take this mask and drag it down like this until it's around the pan or so. So that looks good. And what that's automatically going to do is it's going to animate with it. So it goes from here. Now we'll just go in and tidy it up, make it a little more perfect. Just like that, boom. So now, uh-oh, we got this problem here. We're, we're missing this piece because our ping pong ball went away. So, what can we do to fix the problem? Well, one thing we can do, that's probably the best way to do, is we'll take our ping pong layer, which is underneath our egg. So if I turn the egg off, you can still see the ping pong ball in motion there, yeah? Boom. And we'll split this like that. <laughs> and I want you to hit the right button or right key uh, right clicker on your mouse and go to time freeze frame so that's going to lock this frame down and then you can just take it and stretch it all the way across now vines are only 6.8 seconds so let's go to 615 not sure if that's exactly 6.8 it's a little less but we don't need that and so go to 6.6 seconds and 15 frames on here and hit n and what's that, what that's going to do is take our work area and trim it to that point. Now you can take the end of it and drag it along or whatever, but you know, try and teach you short keys. So hit N, and then you're gonna right click, trim comp to work area. So let's turn our egg layer back on. Oh, and you know what I see? It froze at a bad point in time. It froze when the egg is frozen. So what we'll do is the time remap, we will pump that to when the ping pong ball is in the pan. See, it bounced in and bounces out. Um, so let's put that to when it's in the pan because then it's fully gone. Yeah, can't see it. Boom, disappeared. Uh, and then we will select this key and delete it. So now for the whole time, it will be, uh, it'll look like the background's the way it should be, the way we want it to be. Now, the only other problem is you can see this shadow, and it's probably because I was in the shot or my arms or something or other. 
Uh, but you can see that my shadow is made this a little darker. Just to get more meticulous, let's really get in there and go just around the pan, okay? So we'll go here and we'll fix the orientation of the anchor point and we'll go around here and we'll go to the bottom and keep fixing these anchor points so it's just around the, this, the circumference and the circle of the pan, right? Fix this up just like this. And we'll make it go just around the egg as well. And let's move this over here. So now we're on this mask point and see how it's like moving. The way to fix that to make it just to move one of the anchors is to hold the alt key. So I'm moving this, but it's moving the, um, the anchor point I don't want to use. So hold the alt key and now you can just isolate it. So now we're only moving one. And what I'm going to do is, uh, so we have that one keyframe that's fixed now. I'm going to delete these other two keyframes because it, our mask is just too different. So I'll delete these two, which will keep uh, the following masks the same. And now all we have to do is just bring this lower to get rid of our egg stream and fix the anchor points. And just make it so we don't see that egg stream anymore. Or try to, there we go, that looks, that's good. Boom, so hits the pan, starts cooking. So the brightness, should be the same. So now we only have a mask around this. Like if I solo this by pressing this uh, button over here, all we have is a clean empty frame. It's basically just black, 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 black until it finally, boom, comes in, fills the pan up. And because it's locked down, we don't have to worry about it. Boom, smiling faces, cooking eggs. So now, Let's let's take a little preview. I'm gonna go to the beginning, or I'll go to a point where I should start. Hit B for beginning, and then I'll go to a part where I want it to end looping and hit N. But we still have our whole project here, and I'm going to hit the zero key, um, and that what's it's going to do is do a a RAM preview. Breakfast. Mm. Breakfast. Hmm. I don't think that looks too bad. With some wiggle or something like that. What does look bad is that this is in here already. Maybe that's it. So, how about this? Let's hit the M key. So we have our frames. And let's boost this one up here. So the pan is still... Oh. The ping pong ball hits. That's not good. How can we fix this? All right, so this is what we're gonna do. We're going to get just the pan by taking by taking our layer that is served for our background, for our frozen background, and we're going to duplicate it. So now it's on top, and if we hit U, it's going to bring up our effects and drive this back a little bit, so where the pan is empty, and we'll delete this frame. So now, that ball is frozen in time, it's frozen in midair. But now we'll go to the pan, and we will hi just highlight the pan once again. But again, the egg isn't even in the shot, so we don't have to worry about it. We're just masking this out. And then if we add some feathering, maybe like five, feather of five, and then undo it. So boom, there we go. Bam. So it's still all that for a little, a little being perf a perfectionist. And uh, here we go. So boom. All that just because we didn't want 
uh, some egg in the shot already. Look at that. So boom. So let's take a look at uh, how it looks. I'll play it at uh, I'll play it at like a third percent. Cooking ping pong balls for breakfast. Mmm, yummy. Cooking ping pong balls for breakfast. Mmm, yummy. Well, I'm happy with that. So let's, uh, real quick, I wanted to show you guys this thing. Uh, you can zoom in, zoom out. I use my mouse key by hovering over this. Uh, or it's also over here to where you can like fit up to 100% or just fit or, you know, go to 50%. And uh, here you can preview your stuff. If it's going too slow, put it down to a quarter and it's gonna really make the quality really crappy. But uh, if you're doing it at full, it's gonna be more difficult. So I'm happy with this. Uh, I'm going to go to where you can see my demeanor starting to change. I wanna end it with me being happy. So I'm gonna go to just before I stop smiling and hit N right click trim comp to work area so boom now we have this so now if we wanted to make it vine like what we're going to do is take our ping pong egg comp and drag and drop it into a new composition so now if we open this then we can edit it but now we have this new composition where it's already pre-made and what we're going to do from here is hit Command K and we'll change the lock aspect ratio. Let's take that off and change this from 1920 to 1080 to 600 by 600 because vines are all done in squares. From here, uh, we want to be able to scale it. So you can hit S for scale and then bring it down. Uh, the way that I tend to do it is I will be able to see what I'm working with. If I hit Command Shift H, that's hiding everything, right? So, this is what we wanna do. Bring it up to the same frame, and these vines tend to move. It gives it some wiggle room. So let's hit, let's hit it and hit P for position. And we're gonna give this an expression uh, there's a bunch of different expressions to basically tell the video what to automatically do so we don't have to do too much. So what we'll do is hit uh, Alt or Option, hold it, and click this stopwatch. And now it's going to give us uh, this text that we can use. So what we want to write is wiggle, uh, open parentheses, uh, let's do 0.25 to try it out comma uh, 30 to try it out and then end parentheses and then uh, you can either click away or you can hit the uh, uh, not the return key the enter key uh, that's on the right side of your keyboard so now what you can see is you see it I'm going to turn on uh, the layer so you see the brown layer you can see it moving it's wiggling. It, get, it makes it look like the camera is actually doing something or that the cameraman is doing something. So, you know what we're going to do? I'm not in the frame the way I want it to be. So, I'm just going to scale this like this just so we can see our whole frame, see what we're doing. But now it's, it's wiggling it's moving and that that's not a good look for us right because we can just see that now it's, it just looks like a weird camera trick so let's actually scale this up a little bit so we can still see everything and we're going to add a new solid layer so command Y or you could go to layer new solid hit black so now we have this new solid and what we're going to do is basically make bars at the top and the bottom of the screen. So if we go over here to the mask and hit the rectangle tool, we'll cut it off like this. And just so we can keep it in check, let's hit choose grid and guide options right here. And let's do proportional grid. 
So this gives us a good idea of what to do. Let's bring it down here. And then we'll select the black uh, solid again. And we'll hit the rectangle again. And we'll highlight this bottom area. Cool. So now, if we hide the title safe action and all that stuff so we can just see what we had. It's moving, but you can't really tell base, strictly because... Uh, we have these black bars and stuff at the top and bottom. So let's move our video up a little bit. And we could even probably scale it down just a touch. Just to get in the position we want. And we can see it moving around. Now it looks like it's moving a little too much. So let's change this expression uh, from 0.25 to 0.2. And then 30 to uh, 25. And basically, what this is saying is uh, every uh, 0.2 seconds, or have it have it only happen 0.2 seconds every second, I believe. And this is how many frames you want to move. So we're, it's moving 25 frames. So now it's going to be moving significantly less, but it's still moving nonetheless. Boom! So there it is, and that's how it ends. But I'm not really a fan of the way it ends. We want it. We don't want to cut off our subject's head. So let's scale this down a little more and then put this in the position we want it to be in. And then from here, if we go through... See, this is a good reason, uh, a good time when you don't want uh, something to feather. We made masks on this black solid, but we don't want it to feather uh, because we want it to be sharp. It's a part of the illusion. So now, let's play this through uh, like this. Let's play it through. Cooking ping pong balls for breakfast. Mmm, yummy. Cooking ping pong balls for breakfast. Mmm, yummy. It's good. I'm going to move, change the camera angle to uh, a little less. Let's change it to 15 every 0.15 second. So I don't want it to move too much, because if it moves too high, we're missing the head. If it moves too low, we're missing the egg. So you gotta, you know, we gotta compromise. So it's all trial and error, of trying to figure out where you want to put it and all this stuff. Cooking ping pong balls for breakfast. Boom. Mm, yummy. Cooking ping pong balls for breakfast. Mm, yummy. Happy with that. So. With that being said, let's render this out. You're going to go to Composition, Add to Render Queue, and let's keep this at best settings. Let's change this to, it's at lossless with alpha. We want it as a QuickTime file. We want it as, a, go to Format Options. We want this from Animation to H.264. All the rest of that's good, 100%. And let's turn the audio on, because we do want that. We'll hit OK. Output 2. And uh, you click that, and this is where you're going to save it. So go to vlog, or, or not vlog, but go to where you want to save it. Ping pong egg. And then you render it out. And then I'm going to teach you guys how to upload it to Vine. So if you guys want to start making your own Vines, you can upload them to your computer uh, or upload them from your computer so you'll see people who do vines who have like music in them and it's just like way too perfect for them to have done it like cold turkey you know what I mean so it's because a lot of these viners are editing their stuff and using uh, this uh, extension plugin to upload it and it's a plugin from vine or well, is it from vine you can only use it with Google Chrome, apparently. It's called Vine Client, and it's free. And just go to, I don't know if it's client.vineclient.com, or just Google search Vine Client, and it'll pop up, and you'll be able to download it. And once our video is done here pretty soon, that's why Vine's nice, because they're only six-second videos, right? We'll go to... The home, after you log into your Vine account, go to Upload. See, it logged me out because I was logged out for too long. 
general rules, blah, blah, blah. Oh, recommended video specifications, 480 by 480. Huh. Well, I guess we should do 480 by 480, right? So, let's do that. We'll go back into this, change this, 480, 480, and uh, grab the black and hit Command Shift K or Command Shift Y. And it will take you to the black solid settings and just hit make comp size. And that will bring it back down to the way that we wanted it. And then just scale our video down to the way we had it as well. And just double check to see that it doesn't go out of the frame or anything or if it's how you want it to be where you want it to be, when you want it to be there. Good. So let's go back to the render queue and we'll hit Command D or Control D for you guys on Windows. I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna do it. 5,000 kilobytes. This is gonna look good. This is what we, this is what we want. While this is rendering out, I want to tell you guys about a way, a website that you could go to to learn more video editing. If this is too easy for you, if this is too difficult for you, I teach too fast, then I want you to hop over to lynda.com slash disturb reality where you can get seven days worth of free tutorials. lynda.com gives you 24 hour access to over 75,000 videos tutorials. It's less than $25 a month and you'll learn from expert instructors with real world experience. If you go to lynda.com slash disturbreality right now, you'll get a seven day free trial and watch as many tutorials as you possibly can. Whether you want to learn non-linear editing, motion graphics, or 3D elements, you can learn it at lynda.com slash disturbreality. Sign up for your free trial and start to stop waiting for me to come out with new videos and get unlimited access to over 75,000 tutorials. Beautiful. So now it's finished. Let's see. 4.7 megabytes, perfect. It's gotta be under five, right? If we play it. Cooking ping pong balls for breakfast. Mmm, yummy. Perfect. So, let's hop back over to this, choose a video, and pick the file that we just did. Caption it whatever you like. Start your upload and you'll be off to the races. Well, thanks for checking out the tutorial, guys. I hope you like it. And again, check out lynda.com slash disturbreality if you want to continue your video editing ventures. And I will uh, be back with a video editing magic tutorial in the future. Subscribe to uh, this channel, youtube.com slash Cloyd, and how to disturb reality to learn powerful magic, integrate with social dynamics. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Thanks.